Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another new episode of my program, Chill Capsule. So as the name goes, here we are to discuss about very serious topics that we often you know, come across in our daily life, but it's going to be a very cool discussion, not getting into a very serious questionnaire kind of a program. So that's why we call it the Chill Capsule. Today, I have uh, Ms. Hatri Dubey. She is the co-founder of HURIF, uh, sorry, Australia. She has worked across many continents and has developed a high student success ratio, trading Russian, Chinese, Nepalese, Korean, Japanese, and Indian students as an ELECOS trainer from IH Sydney. She has over the years mentioned, uh, you know, mentored students and budding entrepreneurs in entrepreneurship and is presently working as a startup incubator. So let me tell more about her. She has done her schooling in Lucknow from the very prestigious Loretta Convent. Then she's gone to the Isabella Thorburn uh, College where she did her BA and become an MCOM, of course. And then she also did a rigorous training in teaching English. Right? Uh, is that right, Katri? Yes. To the course. foreign students. Right. Yeah. So let me start. Um, so before I start, let me uh, introduce myself also. My name is Shilpi. I'm the host of this show. And I am inquisitive to know about people who have always moved out of the ordinary uh, path, you know, often taken by people to do something different, to take the road less traveled. So Katri, to begin with, um, Although, I mean, you have not digressed much from the path of education, right? Mm -hmm. But then from the generation that we come from, what actually intrigued you to get into this area wherein we, we were just, we didn't know that it can be a career too. We always thought, okay, you want to become a teacher and you don't want to teach in India, then you go to Dubai, you go to Canada, you, you become an uh, IELTS trainer, but helping students to get abroad, um, how did this come to you? So, Shilpi, I would just take you back to exactly the year 2012. Uh, many people say we are teacher by choice, but I'll tell you very honestly, I have been a teacher by chance. So a group of friends were going and they were filling up forms for an entrance examination for be it. And I just wanted to be a part of the crowd. So I went and uh, luckily I got None of them got through, but uh, they got into different private colleges. But I got into Isabella Thorburn College. Now, what happens is that the institute that you go into, I'm saying this why I'm using my example, because I'll be coming to the university abroad part of it. The university or the institute you choose makes a huge difference. So when I started my training of uh, B.Ed., I came across these excellent mentors. So we were a group of 60 girls and uh, we were the focus of our teachers day in and day out. And the kind of love they instilled in us for teaching and helping students to be more honest, helping students, reaching out to students. We reached out to uh, a lot of communities. We did a lot of work. So this started right from there. And uh, one of my mentors, she introduced me to writing a research paper. So I wrote a research paper, which got selected uh, for the London School of Management Education. And then again, I traveled to London. So that was the first time when I traveled to London and I went and I presented my paper there. That was like a dream come true. So I can actually realize what a student would feel sitting in an aeroplane, going to a different country, looking at foreign land, uh, you know, and just imagining how it would be to go and sit amongst mentors, amongst a peer group, and, you know, just give a lecture, give a speech, participate. So that's exactly where it started from. So I believe that that's where the love started. And now after so many years, I have been lucky enough to make it my career choice now. Well, that's really interesting. And um, so, you know, back then, did your family support you for taking up this career? Did they tell you it's okay, you can go ahead with it? Uh, the thing is, uh, Shilpi, I 
I'm one of the persons who got married very early in life. I was barely 20 when I got married. So uh, I, I was I was not even a graduate. And my first condition about getting married was that I would never give up on my studies. I was the kind of very studious kind of a person and I never wanted to give up on my studies. So that was one condition that was predetermined. So nowadays you have a prenuptial contract. This was my prenuptial contract that, you know, I'll get married only if I'm allowed to study. But thankfully, I had a lot of family support. Uh, I had uh, immense support from uh, my co-workers who were like family to me. So I have got a great extended family in the form of ex-co-workers and present co-workers also. So there was a huge support from everyone. The only support I would say, it, it isn't a, a non-support, it's kind of a hurdle that you get is from people who believe that it's going to take time for women to set up a industry, right? So they believe uh, there are certain sectors for women. They can just go into those sectors like teacher ban sakti hai ya zada se zada counselor ban sakti hai. Usi mein business start karo and that's exactly what you want to do. But I, when I chose to be an incubator, when I chose to, uh, you know, help uh, men as well as women with setting up their businesses. So I did face a lot of hurdles. You're telling about government schemes and you are helping us all that. So I believe that mindset of the society related to women starting their own business, that's still a little prevalent. But I think everything vanishes the moment you close your ears and eyes. You just got to believe in your idea and go ahead. Don't think about anything. So yes, I have been lucky enough to get a lot of support from everywhere. Well, uh, I hope that, you know, girls uh, around uh, India and everywhere should get such kind of a support because I think equally potential they are, you know, and equally they are hardworking also and sincere where it goes to giving dedication and devotion. My second question would be like, um, why uh, did you choose like counseling students to go abroad? Uh, one reason you told me that, you know, the experience, the adventure that they would be there, the novelty of it, of sitting, you know, in a foreign land and watching a different culture and living it too. So you yourself have presented a paper in a foreign university. Um, you must have interacted with the professors and students there. So what difference do you find between uh, the Indian education system and the system abroad? Like, uh, I'm not like compare comparison, not that way, but um, what are the differences? Like, what are the best practices we can take from them or they can take from us? Uh, so I'll uh, tell you about my experience. Although I went to London to present my paper, uh, in the year 2018, I went to Sydney, Australia to do my CELTA course. So that's a very rigorous course of about one and a half months. I did it in one and a half months, one of the toughest uh, courses to pass, actually. So uh, and we were a class of just three students. We started off as six students and three of them dropped out because of the rigorous uh, things that you do there, like you prepare yeah. lesson plan. At night, morning, you are there, you're presenting it, and you've got students who don't know how to speak English. You've got Koreans, Japanese, Nepalese, all these people, you know, they don't even know English, right? So sometimes you used to use sign language to tell them and communicate with them. So that was a tough part of it. One thing that I picked up from there that is very prominent was peer correction, which is still not there in India. It is not taken very well. It is not entertained very well. And even if we have just started, you know, with peer, uh, you know, think, pair, share and peer editing and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it is still going to take a lot of time to implement, right? So there nobody felt bad if they gave a critical remark about my teaching. There was one teacher who was telling me about the flaws in my teaching, yeah. as well as my classmates who were telling me my flaws. So you were supposed to take it in a positive way. You can't go around crying about it. Here, I believe it's more of kind of an ego hassle starts happening. How did you correct yes, yes. my teaching? Look at your class, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just talking about teacher training right now. So this is exactly what I experienced there. Apart from this, there was a lot of practical exposure. 
we were taken out from our classrooms our teachers were uh, they like they were just like friends to us and but that doesn't mean that we compromised on anything we had more of a practical exposure there that still needs to you know that skill development part still we need to work we're doing a marvelous job uh, by the introduction of skill development with NEP 2020 coming you know into practice but still the implementation is a is a long story right now so that's that's the difference I felt. So um, now when you encourage students to go abroad, now students come with their own choices, right? Um, they, they come there. Is there any kind of psychological test, aptitude test that you take, or you just agree with their choices? Okay, if I want to do this, I want to go to such and such university. So you just tell them all about the fee structure and the course, or is it that you also take the effort to you know, uh, understand their real aptitude and suggest them something good. Right. So what happens is that most of the students they come with a preconception about what country we want to go to, and sometimes they also have the university in mind. So uh, they need to understand there are very different things with different countries. Most of us think about study abroad is just concentrated to USA, Canada, UK, Australia. Yeah. But we've got countries like Germany, we have got so many places that are going to give you so many opportunities. So I tell the students, you have to find out your interest area, right? And of course, the basic thing that the students look forward to is most of them, I wouldn't say everybody, but most of them think about migrating to this country after completing their course. They're looking for work visas, right? So our choice is totally depending upon what they are expressing. This is the first time when I meet them, I ask them exactly what do you want? Are you going there to study and come back and work here? Or are you going there thinking about migrating to that country? Are you looking at your future in US? Are you looking at it in Canada? So what's going on in your mind? That's the first thing I ask them because they need to be very clear about that. Soon after that, I conduct a test with them. Now this test is going to, it tests a lot of things. Like it's, it's not a very direct test, nothing to put a pressure on them, but definitely we do a lot of tests related to thinking skills. So that exactly tells us what the child is interested in. If they management, MBA, they are confused about which branch to go into, right? MBA, primer phase, you have around 25 specializations in MBA. Not in India, I'm talking about these abroad universities. So they have a wide platter to choose from. And the more choices you have, the more confused you get. So this test that I take with them helps them, not me, but them to realize that, you know, this is the specialization that we want to do or we want to go ahead with that. So we do a thorough analysis of what their mindset is. Then, of course, we tell them options based upon how much money they are ready to spend, because there are some countries which are which have a pretty high living cost. So uh, like somebody comes to me and says we want to study in Australia, but we do not want to spend too much on the living cost. So different cities have different living costs, right? So Sydney is costlier as compared to Melbourne and Brisbane. So we tell them, fine, we are going to give you Australia. But then again, if you want to compromise on your living cost, then you can go to a university in Melbourne or a university in Brisbane. And uh, then we also share with them options wherein they can go and do part-time work, right? So we give them options like Germany and England, uh, you know, these uh, places they provide with work visas. So UK recently has introduced uh, that you can do uh, an extended two year work visa to students. So if there are students who are looking for job opportunities there, if they're looking for part time work, Germany allows you 180 days of uh, part time work as a student. So these are the options we tell them the options that you know, nobody tells them uh, in one go, right? So that, that's exactly what the difference is and how we go about doing this process. Um, because you are dealing with the foreign universities and uh, you are actually dealing with the education system as per se, is there anything uh, you would like to 
reflect upon the Indian education system, which you find really good, and you feel that, uh, you know, it's not there in the foreign university, or it's not to that level, anything, you know, the merits of our education system? Oh, honestly telling you, uh, the Indian education system till K-12, right, till the time you do your plus two, gives you that skill development wherein you are taught to work hard, right? You've got competition. You've got to beat competition. Let's agree to this. We have a class of 45 plus students, right? Yeah. So certain skills are subconsciously developed in you. Like you have, you are competitive, you work hard. Then again, the Indian education system is very content driven. You have a lot of content that you have to study. When you compare it to uh, year seven and year eight in any other universe, uh, any other country for that matter, you have a lot of content to study. So you are already accustomed to absorbing a lot of information, memorizing a lot of information, right? So I think this is the best part of the Indian education system till plus two. It prepares you for anything and everything. So there's a huge leap when they enter into university and they take a lot of buffer time to settle in. And some of them even, you know, they lose out because they take casually lete hai year 12th. Ki padhai ko. Kya hai? class 10th, mein hi aap, you know, the children, they start preparing for their public exam. 12th, they start preparing for their first public exam. So is tarike se, you're already used to it. So when you go to a university, let's say you have enrolled yourself for BSc honors in Netherlands, right? You go and you are so accustomed to hard work that you won't need the buffer time. You will be a star performer from day one, right? So that's how the Indian education system supports you. And which is, which is I think, a very striking feature in the foreign countries, uh, all the abroad schools should learn from us how we are managing with limited resources, yet we are producing the best minds all across the globe. So that's something that we should learn from us. Uh, one very important question, Tatri. Uh, many children who, you know, don't believe their parents, not kids even, I would say, not even children, their parents don't believe in coming to consultants and taking any kind of, because if, if they don't want to pay the fee, they feel it's too much for them. So sometimes they make their own decisions of sending a child to a certain university. And, but there are organizations also which are fraudulent. Right. And they charge less fee, mm -hmm. um, they give them quite, you know, uh, false promises and thus. So how do you recognize, how would you suggest a person who's going to such consultancies, for example, so how can they in a way recognize that, you know, this is the correct one and this is a fraudulent one. So what would you suggest to that? I would say, and I always tell this to my students also, that whatever, whichever university you want to go to, First, you have to check the ranking of the university, right? There is an international ranking standard known as the QS World Survey. They provide you with the ranking of the university and the ranking system abroad is very transparent. They take into account all the fields of the school. They take into account the results. They take into account, uh, you know, the pay packages. They also take into account the curriculum. Taking into account everything, they provide the ranking of the university. So first step is check the ranking of your college, right? Even if you're not going to a consultant, let's say you don't want to go to a consultant, there are official websites of the universities. There is enough. See, nowadays you have enough content on Google. Anybody who has a research bent of mind, that's why I am not very famous with the uh, most of my other consultants and consulting companies, because I kind of, you know, I talk in favor of the students, right? And sometimes I provide free counseling and I tell them the shortcuts, which accounts to our business. But then again, it's important that the child is given a transparent view or the parent because they are spending a huge amount of money, Shilpi. They are spending, some of them are even taking loans to send the children abroad. Yeah. Right. So you can't afford to play gamble. You know, you can't afford to gamble that kind of a finance or a fund. 
So what I tell them is you need to check out the university's official websites. There are support options there. There are support groups there. Do a lot of research. If you can't do research, come to us, come to the consultants. But when you are consulting somebody, do make sure that if they are suggesting a university to you, that university has a ranking, number one. Number two, you must check out the alumni placement pay package which companies come for campus selection right so that's not only abroad but here in india also there are many fraudulent universities you should go ahead and check that out here also so you must check that out qs world survey pe aap unke ranking dekhe unke bare mein sab pata kariye then when you get confused come to us when you want to look at scholarship options come to us we will provide you with N number of scholarship options. SAB scholarship options are zero, zero tuition fee. Hai. You just have to go to the country and you have to pay for the living expenses, right? So that is where the role of the counselor comes, right? So we come here and we profile of the child, right? And we are not kind of cheating them into certain universities who are paying commissions or stuff like that. So you need to be very cautious about it. You as a student or as a parent must double check and cross check any information that your consultant is providing you. Do not blindly believe and obviously check for accreditation, check for uh, what all certifications are there and what all uh, you know licenses there with the university. So you must, because there was one case that we had recently wherein somebody got enrolled in uh, engineering in Canada and that university had already got around 23 courses banned by the government of Canada, right? Oh. So this is exactly what happens. And you've spent a huge amount of money in doing engineering. Engineering spans for four years. So imagine the amount of fee and the amount of living expenses and then it's indecisive whether government of Canada Kalko or be courses ban karti hai ya nahi karti hai. So always look at the history of the university, look at the courses and be very thorough before you take a decision because this is a life changing decision. You are putting in a loan, not even a loan, chalo, aapke parents ne aapko fund kiya hai, but it's a huge amount of money that you're spending. So aapko, you should go to a good university. Aptitude tests hote hain, bohat sare exams hote hain, jo aap dijiye. Kabhi bhi ye mat sochi that I have been an average student and I cannot get a good SAT score, SAT score. Or I cannot get a good GMAT score. It's not like that. These exams are based not to test your knowledge of school uh, curriculum, but they test your intelligence, they test your reasoning abilities, and your proficiency in English, which is the medium of instruction abroad, they test you there. So get out of this myth that if I'm in average performer school, I can't get GMAT in It's not like that. So aptitude test DJ, SAT DJ, scholarships milengi aapko. Have faith in your profile. Apna profile achche se build up kariye. Then you should be, you know, and then again, check and cross check with the university. It's very important. Direct university ke official website pe jaiye. Government ki website pe jaiye. For example, I'll give you just a very small example. The government of New Zealand uh, provides you with this assistance that you can go and inquire about any university. Their background check, everything. So the government gives a huge support there. So is tarike se go ahead and do it on your own. Despite the fact your counselor is telling you, most of the counselors are genuine and they provide you with good information because we are also legally bound to give you services, right? We cannot enter into, unless and until it's a very uh, cunning kind of a agency or person, nobody would risk their license or their career like that. But do make sure that you don't fall into traps. And uh, coming to uh, another important question, um, parents usually go for education loans mm -hmm. or they start funding. So do you also help the students as to how they can arrange for the fee? For example, if the parents are not that well off, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so the methods, is it from the nationalized banks that they should take the education loan? Is it better or any bank can give them the loan, you know? So you also suggest them that way, where to go for loans? Right. 
so uh, the reason why i started i jumped from being a facilitator to being a counselor main agenda was to help the middle income group to understand that it's possible to go abroad without investing too much of money there are n number of scholarships available for indian students specifically number one your target okay. should be scholarships you can get a tuition fee waiver and countries like germany have zero tuition fee for higher education if you happen to get into any of the public universities in germany the private universities are also very affordable so there are countries wherein you can go and you can get a waiver they are inviting students to come germany is doing this because they have they want brain they want uh, they are an industrial hub we know about the german technology there are so many industries there they want intelligent students to come and work with them they believe in high productivity and high efficiency so this is one country yeah. you kehte hai ki aap zero tuition fees do aap aake free mein padho hamare yahan sirf aap rehne ka paisa do so there are students who are exploring this option then scholarships apart from scholarships let's say you have done your masters in india aapko research mein jana hai there are many professors who fund your research they are so philanthropic in nature they achieve so much in life they become angel investors for you so be in touch networking is very important be in touch with universities you know do a thorough research about the scholarships be in touch with professors and mentors they are the best people over there who will guide you with respect to all these things then of course coming back to your question about funding uh, getting a loan preferably from a nationalized bank most of the banks nowadays have reduced the rate of interest for students who want to go abroad and they've come up with many lucrative schemes so you can talk to many talk to many banks compare their plan compare their interest rates right and mostly they expect the student to pay once that person gets a job right mm. so you have to keep that prospect also in mind so a lot of funding options are available anybody who wants to go abroad if you don't want to take help from your parents you can go abroad and then of course you can pay for it later so that's one option available but one thing you need to keep in mind that there some of the banks they do require uh, your asset account asset as in how uh, you have to show that asset uh, backup some of the banks they ask for that otherwise nowadays the banks are also competing so much that they want to you know give out loans to students so most of them have compromised on the limit they have for asset uh, showing valuation but then again options are many students can anybody can for that matter irrespective of your economic background or your financial status you can go ahead and get a degree from abroad i think this brings me to the point that you know in this case students also have to be careful with the fraudulent consultancy who sometimes tell them that we'll help you get a loan right that's true sometimes so, what happens so is that they do not they do not reveal uh, what interest they are going to charge sometimes what yeah. they do is they provide you funding with uh, foreign uh, banks or foreign funding agencies yeah. now you are sitting here in india and you are being connected to somebody in us who is promising you to lend you money in dollars and then is uh, asking you to pay it back so that's a trap right you have to either just go to a bank simple thing a bank which is trusted for many years go to that bank go to the official website go to the bank and inquire about it don't talk to consultants don't talk to uh, you know these uh, don't talk to people who are into customer uh, you know getting more customers kind of marketing just go to the bank talk to the right person they will guide you some of the banks they have collaborations with foreign banks also right we've got foreign banks here also aap hsbc ki baat kar lo aap city bank ki baat kar lo they have you know an international approach so they are more than happy to help students aajkal sab help karte hain sahi source ke paas bas aapko jana hota hai right thank you so much satri for taking out time and enlightening us on this very very important topic usually right. people don't talk about they feel that so much is available on the internet and so much you know they know uh, from the google they can search and find 
but uh, I feel that my audience who is listening to me, whether it's the parents or the students themselves, that you need to get into touch with a consultant because that's what they are meant to do. Then they, the kind of research they have done, the kind of knowledge they have garnered, uh, you know, it will save not just you falling into trap of something wrong, but also saving your energy and time in selecting the correct university. So Dadri, wishing you a very happy Women's Day and all my audience here. So that people like you who can always walk a different path and do good for the society. And congratulations on being a mother too uh, this very so year. Much. Thank you so much, Shilpi. That is, that is one thing that has been the highlight of the previous year. Uh, my company and my son both came into this world in the month of August. So for all those people who believe that after you can't do anything after you can't do anything, it's an eye opener. Trust me, after my delivery, ke 15 din baad I started with my work. And it is possible. It is possible. And you don't need an entire army of maids. No. A woman, uh, yeah. once she becomes a mother, is an army in herself. You are your army. Yeah no matter what conditions you are in. And even for those who are not moms, let me tell you, you carry an entire army in you, no matter what field you want to get into. So everything- I is think the passion and the sincerity and the feeling that, you know, that uh, we have to prove ourselves because that is how, because, you know, the once you do not prove yourself, a man can be forgiven because of the circumstances. But a woman would be, see, he told you before, Yes. It's, very hard. it's still hard to fight patriarchy we have to accept patriarchy exists and uh, you know you have to so we have lots of people talking about feminism and they talk in a very uh, you know a very aggressive way about feminism feminism is not proving a man wrong or a man yeah. down feminism is celebrating womanhood or celebrating girlhood so i think feminism should be celebrated it is something to be very happy about rather than go ahead and fight we can't fight you know you can't compare apples with oranges god created us different a man is a woman is philosophy right i believe in philosophy that we are different creatures you know we have our own um, psychological makeup and uh, physical uh, you know makeup so in that way we need to actually feel proud of who we are rather than imitating the other gender absolutely you know our mother who's celebrating what we do and uh, yes of course if we are fragile or we are a little feminine uh, you know uh, kind of people um, that's the what do you call the why calling myself a lady darling because there are certain things that men are supposed to do in society you know there are certain things that god has created and that's how nature has created them so you know we should accept it and live harmoniously and take the society forward so thank you once again uh, you were the best person to celebrate this women's day with me thank you so, so much my pleasure again on to my platform to uh, know more about your motherhood experience <laughs> oh it's it's completely uh, it was tough because i had a premature delivery and uh, i was one person who has taken her time to enter into motherhood so i have taken good 11 12 years to set up my career and I got a lot of advice and this and that, which my husband did not. <laughs> let me tell you that. So all the advice, all the gyan in the entire world was directed towards me because I was supposed to be the flag bearer of having a child. So uh, what I did was few years, I was under stress. Then I decided, close your ears, close your eyes. I will be a mom when I am capable financially physically, mentally. So that's Thank how you. my son came into this world after a long, long time. And uh, he was premature. So obviously he needed a lot of care. He needed my presence. He still needs my presence. He has just turned six months old. He needs my presence. 
but that doesn't change me as dhatri being yes, warm right. is a beautiful thing but i kind of i believe that he is too young to understand this but later on in life he will have to understand that my mom is an individual herself she needs to have a yeah. uh, ghanta to have a coffee she needs to read a book before she goes to bed this is her need yeah. if i am able to grow you know uh, a daughter or a son like that i have a foster daughter by the way i already have somebody her name is yashika so uh, yashika is my niece and she's also my foster daughter so it's not that motherhood is a surprise to me i have already nurtured her and you know uh, she she's not here in india she's in australia but through our communication i have experienced motherhood with her taking care of her talking to her and to her also no matter it is a son or a daughter you have to let your children know that you are also an individual you need to go out with friends you need your time in order to keep yourself sane so both my children i hope when they grow up they will understand this that mom is somebody else also which is totally different yeah. she needs her career she needs her personality and only when she is good there can she be sound and she can be happy with us so this is to all the children please let your moms be themselves right no matter they are homemakers or they are going out doing a job or they are business women you have to respect the fact that wo aap aap hi ke liye nahi banayi gayi hai wo khud ke liye bhi jeena chahti hai unko jeene dijiye so let's create a generation of children who will be very helpful towards their husbands their wives and their partners in the future they will understand kal ko beta bada hoga he will be able to respect agar uski partner ghar pe thaki hui aati hai to bechara uth ke chai pi lega ya meri beti hai she will understand that her husband or her partner is coming home tired and she will have the courtesy to go and offer a glass of water yeah so that that's totally my take on motherhood and i have a very different weird way of parenting probably most of the people wouldn't agree with that but i have this you know you this is my way and everybody you know you're not bachelor mothers you don't get a degree in motherhood you learn right so that that's what my philosophy is i hope some people will find you know sync with my philosophy and everybody's philosophy yeah. works great definitely so thank you dhatri thank you so much for being here yeah. and such a lovely conversation we had over this so hope to see you on this platform once again <laughs> it will be my pleasure shil you are such a wonderful host and it is so good and so relaxing to talk to you it doesn't feel like i'm you know i am virtually connecting with you it feels as if we are just sitting across the table and oh. having a cup of coffee first person that came on my mind as soon as i thought oh where do i go for a stay so it was like that three oh, there was no true. other uh, thoughts about it you made so, my wonderful day by saying this you actually made this women's day very special for me and thank you for your thought that you know women should celebrate i loved your hashtag women celebrating women i think it's high time that we understand that the patriarchy is finding its roots from women women should teach their sons to respect other women and women should respect the other women only then we yes. will be able to get rid of patriarchy thank you thank you dot thank you so much your pleasure it's my pleasure and you're such a wonderful host <laughs>